Hey guys, Josh Finn here from J&H Aerospace. Today we're going to talk about how to do the construction of jigs and towers for the Science Olympiad Towers event. This video specifically is oriented for the 2025 rules, but it's applicable to others as well. So first we're going to show you how to assemble a towers jig from our uh, Division C kit, as well as from our Division B kit. If you can't tell, Division B is more complicated this year than Division C. Why? You tell me. All right, so with that, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so assembling one of these jigs is pretty easy. They, uh, they slot together, and on these Division C jigs, uh, it's, it's three sides, so there's not even anything required to get the jig together correctly. And so what you can do at that point is just kind of hold it together. By the way, I am doing this over parchment paper. Highly recommend a bigger piece than I've got, but the bottom line is that protects your work surface. So you can then take CA glue of, of any type, and you can squirt it down the... Uh, the groove down here inside this and just kind of let it slide down there as far as it will go and then squeeze it together a little bit so it's all mating together correctly you can hit it with, with glue or sorry with accelerator and then you just work your way around like that now you'll notice we don't have the whole thing put together that way yet. Uh, so you just kind of take it in segments. And this isn't the only kind of glue you can use for this. FEMCA is actually really handy if you're um, if you're able to do it without getting it everywhere, um, because it it jumps into all the little gaps and notches, and then the whole thing's put together in one fell swoop. Now another thing you can do in these hard to get spots is on the inside of these slots here, and just work your way up. that. Close the whole thing up. But it is very important. You can see it's starting to slip out a little bit. You get that all taken care of. Okay, so we've finished gluing everything together, and so now the Division C Towers jig is done. So we'll set it aside. Next, let's look at this one from Division B. So for Division B, the problem you have is that there is that uh, ring gauge rule. So we're going to go ahead and pop the ring gauge out. This is an 8 centimeter inner diameter and it has to be able to slide over your tower um, on the top half, so the top 25 centimeters, or rather any part that extends above 25 centimeters. So your tower could be over 50 centimeters tall, but anything that's above that 25 centimeter plane has to fit through this. So we'll set that aside for now. Uh, go ahead and pop all your parts out of this sheet and don't lose them because you're going to need everything except this carrier sheet. You need all the parts in it. But if you break up the carrier sheet, that's fine. Just don't uh, break the parts. And I'm being a little clumsy, and I am breaking some a little bit, but it'll still be functional. All right, so we've got all the parts cut out here. So uh, you can either start on the top or the bottom. We're going to start on the top. 
Now, it's important for you to recognize these extended tabs here, these go on the bottom. They will key into the bottom section. So you can kind of assemble this thing together. If you want to apply glue to it now, you can, but you want to be careful in that, in that you've got to pay attention to the alignment of everything. So if I slot this together like that, I've got this kind of floating around. So I would want to fairly quickly come in here with one of my bulkheads. Those are the parts that are labeled bulkhead. And you can stick that in. And now everything starts to square up if and only if you hit it with enough CA accelerator to harden it before you let off there. And you could, if you wanted to, go ahead and put a top bulkhead in. You will note that there are three bulkheads, and they are very important. So you can then continue on this arrangement, and basically we're just making a box here, remembering, of course, keep those tabs, those extended tabs, uh, all on the same end. our top section together. For your lower section, you have these four pyramid segments. And there are a variety of ways to go about putting this together, but I'm going to show you my preferred way. You get everything together and then take this guy and slide it down around the bottom and if you just kind of push it down here it holds the bottom all in place so you can work up top be careful where you get glue here because the top section actually does have to glue over this and so you can stick this bulkhead down in here and then if you're worried about everything getting into trouble um, you could go ahead and put the top on I am going to just squirt glue into these little corners here hit those with accelerator just so the whole thing holds together and then at that point I can lower this top section on here just like that. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on. And then there we have it. Just like that. Now to glue the rest of this together, you can go inside here and apply glue the same way we did before. So you can just run glue seams along here. Make sure you squeeze everything together so it doesn't bow outward or, or relax at any of those joints. And then that's done. 
while it's still going together, we can glue these guys, these gussets in. And they fit, these are fitting a little tight here. Um, it helps to clean out the joints a little bit. There we go, just like that. And then you can go around. So we'll come back when those are in. Okay, so we have all four of those gussets in place. They're glued in. We've hit it with accelerator. Now we can pop this ring gauge off, or former, I should say, and we don't we don't actually need it anymore. The assembly is done. All right, so this is what your completed Division B 2025 tower should look like. The ring gauge, just to verify, does slide right over this. Um, so that's what you want since the structure on this is going to, uh, depending on, on the type, is going to be exposed slightly there. So uh, let's proceed on to some building of uh, towers using these jigs. All right, so once you have your tower jig, whatever type it is, assembled, the next thing is to actually build a tower. So I'm going to rotate back down here. We're going to look at some ways to do this. First thing, I highly recommend having one of these chop stands. Um, this one, I don't know if it's even available anymore, but it has an adjustable arm to set the angle and so on. The next thing is have a bunch of strip wood. So balsa strip wood. You can also get a balsa stripper and you can strip your own. Uh, just make sure it's one where you can get reliable thickness. Um, the big thing to bear in mind is if I have two pieces of wood here that are seemingly identical, uh, they can be drastically different in their properties and in their weight. So you're penalized on weight on these. So, um, for example, if I take my balsa stripper here and I were to set these sticks of wood on here and get them at similar angles. If I set the balsa stripper on this one, again this is just a representative weight, it uh, doesn't touch the, the table there. This piece, however, come on, stay on there presses that one almost all the way to the table. Now, the difference is this piece may be stiffer. It's also heavier. So you want to weigh the pieces, ideally come up with stiffness coefficient data and so on so that you can optimize around that. On a Division C jig with the current rules that require only three points of contact, the solution becomes a little bit interesting as far as what you install here. So you could take long skinny pieces like this that are rectangular and, and fasten them in here, or you could choose square pieces or what have you. The bottom line is, as you can see here, we have a groove that is formed for this. Now the catch to that is that depending on where your parts line up, you could have some conflict with those tabs. So you have to be aware that you may need to mark for the location of some of those and install them after you remove the parts from the jig. You may also want to take Vaseline or candle wax or something and put it down that channel so that you don't glue your parts in. But regardless of how you approach it, you're going to come down here and you're going to tape these parts in. Try to stay out of the way of where you expect to put uh, structural members. How you trim and when you trim these ends is to your prerogative, but the bottom line is you do want those points of contact with the table surface to be as parallel as possible so that you have a smooth contact point because that will impact your results and you may even want to come back with a piece of sandpaper to do that. Ideally just use a sharper razor blade 
than the one I've got. So before you build each tower, and sometimes even during the construction, you're probably going to want to replace your razor blade. So just get a big pack of them, uh, because they are disposable, they cannot be sharpened reliably, so once you're done, you throw them away. So put a lingeron, this is called a lingeron, in there, and then add the additional ones uh, all the way around. Okay, now that we have, I know it doesn't show up super well, but we have all of our, our lingerons in here, you can cut your cross pieces from smaller grades of wood. So this is, uh, this is 1 16th by 3 32nd. Uh, there are a multitude of sizes that you could use, and the only way to know what size to use is to experiment. Now, I'm just going to chop these with, uh, you know, by hand, because I can, except I'm not chopping them at the right angle. The quality of glue joints that you achieve with this are going to really, they're going to determine your results. So, I'm going to come in here. And we'll glue this guy in. And I'm not going to put a whole lot of these in here. Uh, I am, however, since as we go around, we have six of these in this particular installation. We'll make a lot of them. But the, the quality of your glue joints and, and the quality of your cutting is, is very important on these. And the, and the reason for that is any gapping that you have to take up with glue is excess weight and potentially even can reduce the strength of your structure. You also might want to experiment with different types of glues and what their strength to weight ratios are so that you can optimize around that as well. Now, at this point, I have five, and I need one more. And so what we're going to do is we're going to glue a couple of these in, but you're going to find out that we can't necessarily install all of them. So we're going to find out, once we put this one in, is not really wanting to hold at the moment. It's very okay with gluing to me, not so much to the structure. There we go. I've got a huge gap here, so this would be a weak spot. Now, we can't glue this one in because we've got a tab at either end. Now, you could go in with a set of wire clippers and you could, or, or snips or something, and you could break these off these tabs at those locations, but bear in mind, you do have the issue to address that, yeah, that's, that's all well and good, except for the fact that if you decide to change up your locations here for your structure, then all of that goes away, and you're, you're looking at new locations to put all those parts. So what I'm going to recommend is just leave those parts off until you remove your partially completed tower from the jig and then put the rest of them on. Now, something I will mention on this is that as you're putting these, these parts in and you're running into uh, conflicts like this right here, uh, remember this particular type of construction that I'm doing calls for these pieces to cross. So in this case, you would not want to but, uh, split this component. You'll want to just lap it over like that. And so what you can do is you can use a pin here to mark the intersection point. So that once you're done, you can come back and you can put that piece in uh, afterwards and know exactly where to cross it. Okay, so as you can see here now, I have a full set of all of these cross pieces going all the way up. 
And so at this point, I just keep them in an organized fashion and I can start installing them on up there. Okay, so now we have all of these installed on here, all the cross pieces, except for the, the bottom ones that I mentioned. I actually was able to get the rest of them in um, rather creatively. So at this point, you want to pull all of your tape loose. Being careful in a few places, you may have had it wrapped somewhat close to your structure. But if it's scotch tape, it should come right off. Now removing the tower from the jig can be a little interesting. So you have to be very careful and you may have to break a few glue joints loose in the process. You may even discover that in a spot or two you may have managed to glue your tower to the jig. Which is what I have done here. That one's loose. Oh, and I have a piece of tape still hanging out here. That's why this side's not wanting to move. I got a little heavy handed with glue, a little sloppy, and now I'm kind of paying for it. So you basically just have to come through here looking for where it's resisting movement. Now we're starting to slide free. So then you just look for what's resisting movement. And like right here, this is not going to slide over real well. So you may have to pop a few of them loose and make notes of what cross pieces got in the way of removing everything from your jig. Because those tabs that make the nice grooves to slide everything off, um, they can get in the way a little bit. If you orient engineer your structure so that it comes in too close on those tabs, you will run into problems. But eventually, the whole thing comes free. At that point, you just want to look for any loose glue joints. And so there's a lot of post-construction inspection you want to do on these.
So like here, I did not um, move those two cross pieces together so they're able to sway a little bit. There's one that's loose. And then we come down here to the bottom where we weren't able to put these in initially. Okay, so um, I'll have to show it to you this way. We've got a completed Division C 2025 20, tower here. Uh, this one's built pretty sloppy. Uh, it's heavy, bad gluing, but you get the picture. This is how you build one, and it's how you build one on a jig to make it straight and true, even if um, a little might need to be a little bit of post-processing on it. So. There you have it. Hope that's worked out for you. Uh, we'll show a little bit on Division B next. Alright, so we've been through a Division C build, which is simpler. Now we're going to talk about the Division B uh, builds, which are actually more complex. So I'm going to use 1 8 square balsa for this. This gauge is designed for maximum 3 16 square uh, lingerons, the, the component, the vertical components and so the upper section in particular is undersized uh, for that. So if you use 1 8 square which we're going to use here I'm going to suggest that rather than what we're doing that you shim out 1 16th uh, of an inch and the way that you would do that is at regular intervals you would take scraps of 1 16th balsa like this and you would stick in there to, uh, to shim out in both directions on all four sides. And you don't have to do it continuously, you can just do it in, in, in intervals uh, wherever you're gonna tape your parts down. We're not gonna do that just for simplicity because some of you will be using 3 16 square and if you have light 3 16 square, uh, this gauge is, is sized for that. But I don't have any handy at the moment because I ran out, so we're gonna do it with 1 8 square. So, and this is really floppy 1 8 square. Um, this is not what you would want to use for one of these unless you're trying to build it down to like 3 grams and have it not be able to hold the full load. So what we're going to do is we're going to size these uh, laundrons. And one thing you can do is you can cut them oversized where they stick out of the top and then trim them down to size later. I'm not going to do that just for simplicity's sake at this time. Okay, so I've cut four longerons here for the upper part. I've cut four for the lower part as well. It's very important to look. I have beveled the ends of these so that they match this angle. And that's particularly important, even more than down here, right here, where these meet uh, so that they meet squarely. So you can see how it sized that. And it's not a perfect uh, mate that I've made there. Uh, you may want, depending on your research, you may want to put some sort of ring joiner or something around that afterwards uh, to make it work out. But, um, but that's what you want to do. And then um, what we're going to do is we're going to take some tape. And we're going to start taping um, these parts down. Just kind of like this. And you want to stay away from your 
design attach lines. Now, in this case, I'm actually going to glue these two parts together before I tape them. And it's very important, again, don't get glue on your jig because then your tower becomes part of jig. And uh, although the jig does actually meet the, uh, actually it does not meet the compliance because it's plywood and plywood is uh, specifically not allowed. But also it uh, is heavy. So we're going to continue working our way around here. Oh, I'm grabbing from the wrong file again. come back once we got the rest of these on. So we have all of the parts, of the, the Lundrons attached. So there's a variety of ways to approach this, but what I'm going to show you is what I feel is uh, kind of the simplest approach is to just start attaching sticks across the outside like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this piece at both ends. Just like that. And then I'll take another uh, piece of strip wood. I'm going to dab a glue on each end here again. And this is going to come over against me a little bit. That's okay. Excess loose and then we can kind of uh, zigzag our way on up the uh, on up the structure here So we just continue doing that. Of course, at these crossing points, you want to put a little bit of glue in there to bond that. Again, CA glue may not be your best choice. Um, I'm just doing it for ease of description. So we're going to work our way all the way up that way. Uh, for this upper section, we'll go ahead and get into it a little bit. There are a lot of approaches you can take on this. 
Uh, again, this, this video is merely you, to show you how to use the gauge. It's not so much to show you how to build an efficient tower because the reality is that to build an efficient tower, you're going to have to experiment with uh, what works for you. You're going to have to keep good records of your wood quality and so on. Uh, but one approach to this is to start cutting these pieces to size. one as a, a pattern here just so I can show you a couple of these uh, but we're, what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach a couple of these segments and I'm going to show you the the important thing to bear in mind is these are going to cross and they have to deform a little bit in that process and, and that's okay. Now, the issue that you'll run into is you have to account for these on your ring gauge. Now, the reality is the only part of this that affects the ring gauge is the part of this that sticks out. So if you were to bevel this off right here like this, that takes care of the differential right there. And so this, this type of attention to detail of, of wiping off that excess with a razor blade, um, just literally, just like that, that's all you do, that lets you comply with a, a limit size ring gauge. So we'll finish putting in this structure and then we'll... Okay, so we have the entire tower built up around here. And so what we're going to do is take all the tape loose and hopefully we haven't glued this thing on or done anything dumb with having something dig down in there and so uh, it should come off fairly easily and remember the part about not doing anything dumb it includes not getting tape down someplace it doesn't belong It is very easy also to get tape glued in, so that's also something to be aware of. All right. Eventually you run out of sides that have tape on them, and then you can take your tower loose. There's all the tape off, and shockingly, it doesn't slide. Why does it not slide? Probably because it's glued on somewhere. This part becomes a little bit difficult because you don't want to um, destroy your tower as you're sliding it off, but you do want to get it off. Come on, almost there. Here's our gauge, here's our tower. Now if you notice the tower is rocking a little bit, now that could be because the table isn't level, uh, but more than likely it's because the assembly is not quite right. So bear that in mind, you may want to trim the edges. And in my case, I've got this poking up, so I need to probably take off a little bit from this leg. Well, not quite, so we'll take some off from the opposing leg. And 
Now, more so than good. Now, you may need to place cross members across this area because this is a stress riser right here. And so you have to be very careful about that spot. But otherwise, there you have it. All right, guys, I hope you have enjoyed this demonstration of how to build towers using towers jigs like these from J and H Aerospace. And uh, I hope you'll take this and be able to experiment and come up with more and uh, more easily built, more quickly built towers and be able to experiment with different iterations of the structure of them uh, using these uh, awesome little tools that we've been able to come up with. And we hope to see you at some of the invitationals this year and also at the Science Olympiad Nationals. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Josh Finn. This is Hope. We are J&H Aerospace. If you like this video, hit the like button. Also, how about subscribe to our channel and check out jhaerospace.com for new free flight products and all of the tooling that you'll need to build them. Thanks for watching.